Well, after a fairly disastrous last episode when it came to paint and body and generally any panels that we touched on the car, hopefully this episode is going to make amends. And we've been trying, at least we've been trying for the last couple of episodes, to get some paint on the back of the car. Because we have spent, what, six, eight hours oh. this week? Yeah. Just trying to get this back to a stage where there aren't little pock marks of rust dotted all over the edges where the cover that we've got on is rubbing it and it's wearing through and then it rains and it rusts because it's still April right now and there are showers aplenty. So anyone who's been watching a while will know well by now what our problem is. We keep putting primer on the car, which is porous. Water keeps getting into the primer and it soaks into the body filler. Sometimes it expands and sometimes yeah. it just sort of lifts the primer and all sorts of horrible things are happening. So we do still need, as we've been saying for so long, to actually seal it in with some proper paint and lacquer. Now, it's probably not going to be a final coat. This is probably not going to be how we actually end up driving it out on the street. It will still need more rework because the, the surface finish on this is quite rough. It's not exactly prepped, not by a long throw. So we're definitely going to have to finish it up again later. But for the time being, at least, we at least want to cut down on the amount of rework that we're doing on sanding this smooth again, uh, filling it again, priming it again, and just repeating that every time I come back here. So this is a litre of very basic Audi Brilliant Black. It's the same colour that we have for the A3 that's on the drive, which we did a bit of bodywork on last year as well. And this is essentially, as Chris says, a very temporary solution to a long-term problem. I think the worst example we've got of how bad this gets is on the front of the car. Now, a few episodes ago, you'll have seen us installing the aero catches, and in the background of a few shots, you will have seen all this mess here. But even just in a few weeks, it's got an awful lot worse, as you can tell now. In fact, there's actually whole chunks here that are already lifted entirely off the metal. And if I just run a little screwdriver under there, you can see there's a huge amount of this stuff just falling off already. And that's on top of, like, there's cracks in it everywhere. We've got little bits over here and there's even surface rust on top of the primer although in fairness that might just be bits of like metal that we've ground off that have landed on here and rusted but it could also be rust coming through I'm not not too sure so we need a huge amount of rework on the bonnet here and that's exactly what we want to avoid having to do again and again and again everywhere else now the reason we keep ending up in this horrible loop is we keep thinking we can prep and prime and paint the whole car in one big pass and usually I think the way we expect that to work is we'll smooth everything on one day or one week or one visit or whatever and then we'll prime it all and then we'll paint it all and of course we've never actually had enough time to do all of that in one big piece we're always mixing in other bits of work that take our time away and even if we weren't to be honest it's probably just too much of it to get away with that. So this week, instead, we've tried focusing on getting just one part of the car ready to paint. Now, it's still not immaculate. The rear end here is still, I mean, obviously, you can see some filler here. We've been fixing problems even just this morning. And um, we keep coming out and going, as soon as we've, like, sort of filled in one kind of level of badness, I guess you could say, we come out the next day and go, okay, well, now the next, the, now that, like, the next worst bit is visible, like, it brings out all the smaller flaws. So we keep on, like, finishing it and finishing it and finishing it. And this is where we're at now, where this is... Obviously, we need to sand this uh, filler back smooth, but this is near enough ready to paint. Like, we can probably do most of the back of the car and the hoop over here, because for the most part, this is now relatively good, especially this shoulder here that I've spent rather too much time on with some relatively smooth sandpaper earlier, trying to get that really, really nice, which is a little bit pointless because it is all going to come off again. I think I just got kind of carried away. So we're going to sand all of this off again, get this nice and smooth now that we've filled in a few more little holes and cracks and dips in the surface and then hopefully we can hit this with a bit of that gloss paint that Adrian was showing you earlier. So if you watched the last episode that went out, you know, we attempted to make a small panel for the dashboard, which would carry our brake bias adjuster, and I managed to screw it up. This is actually the second attempt that I made, and the reason that it went wrong was I left the panel oversized so that this would fold around under the edge of the dash, and it would give a slightly better transition around for whatever material we put over the top of it, and it would look great. Unfortunately, when I then came to mark and drill the hole for the brake bias adjuster to go through and mount, I forgot to take this extra uh, little fold tab into account, and I placed it really nicely equidistant between these two sides, when actually it should have been further across to my left, your right. But that wouldn't have worked, so that it actually would have had to sit further up so that it would be away from both the framework on, the, uh, on either of these two edges and still have room for the nut to fit onto the very back. So that was version two. This 
is version 3. Version 1 didn't even get this far along, it was just the piece of metal I cut was far too small already and I mismeasured, so go there. So version 3, we've moved the brake bias adjuster even further across to this side because there is a very important piece of equipment I had forgotten to take into account and that is the light switch. Now the light switch is limited by the fact that the loom doesn't go very far from the fuse box where all of the wires go into and where the plug sits. On the right hand drive car the fuse box sits just on the right next to the wheel and then the lights fit just in front of it. So the loom to that is very very short because it just doesn't need to go very far. Now the downside with that, with extending it to anywhere else, is we'd have to extend 17 different cables that run through the back of this and I absolutely do not want to do that. That is a miserable way to do it, considering the amount we've had to extend the loom already. So this circle represents approximately where this will sit and you can see I've marked the framework and given myself a little bit of leeway on all of these relevant corners. Now it does overlap a little bit, this circle is larger than that but that represents approximately where the bezel will sit on the front that will hold this in and we're going to be designing this fairly soon, probably on a live stream. So if you've already watched that live stream, congratulations, you know exactly what this bezel unit is going to look like. So from there, I've drilled the hole out so that it will actually fit the bias adjuster around all of the framework. Now I say this with a great deal of confidence, I haven't actually checked this yet. So you and I, once again, are going to go on a journey of exploration where we find out how badly I have made a mess of this. So we're back over on this side of the car and I've already noticed my first mistake. I've put the brake bias adjuster through backwards and this will never ever fit. And I've just managed to drop the nut as well. So we'll run without it for the time being. But basically this is meant to fit around this section. Well, it looks like it's going to be fourth times the charm, not the third. Oh no. What did you do? What's the inside of this time? Oh god. <laughs> I just... Oh mate. I measured this. I measured this twice. This wasn't even like a, I just took a best guess. No, I genuinely tried and for those, you might be able to see it, the beam that this attaches to runs straight through this section. Well, while we're here, I'm going to make sure that this fits where I want it to go, which is in this corner. And I suddenly doubt that it actually will. No, it doesn't. It doesn't fit anywhere near close to where I wanted to put it, which is absolutely infuriating. I don't understand how I've managed to miss this measurement by so much or that I've managed to miss this measurement by so much three times now. I'm going to have to work out where this will live because where we wanted it to go in this corner, it definitely won't. So while Chris is sanding down the rest of that body filler, I've got in, got a few more of the controls in so that we can see what the dashboard is actually going to look like and found you a better spot to be able to see it all from. So we've got the instrument cluster in temporarily, although it fits a bit further in, but this is the only spot where this light switch actually fits. And even then, it is extremely tenuous. We're gonna to have to take a little bit out of the top of this piece for it to actually fit properly into this section. It doesn't fit over here, which is where I wanted to put it. I mean, I suppose it does fit kind of on a bit of a jaunty angle, but that's extremely awkward, so I don't particularly like that. I'd much rather it sat there, and then this will be where the brake bias adjuster is going to sit instead, so it'll just sit next to it. We also have one other thing we need to install somewhere within easy access of the driver, and that is our electric mirror controls, and that's going to live in this hole down this side. And if I remove all of these pieces, you can get a much better idea of just how badly I messed this panel up. Because as much as it fits really nicely over this side, the shape of the panel is basically spot on. This hole is very much not in the right place and I just cannot believe I managed to miss it by that far. It's really, really quite shocking. 
Well, both the second and third time was not in fact the charm. So I have trimmed this panel down now to exactly the right size because Chris makes a very valid point. We can just 3D print this whole piece that will clip into the framework and it will have all of the embedded sections for the switches to fit into all of the holes in the right place. And we don't then need to make adapters that go onto the aluminium plate. It's all just one piece and it clips into the dash. So this is now for Chris, so that it is the correct size and it is definitely not going on the car. But that means with all of the other work done, sanding down that new primer that we put on, the new um, filler that we put on, it's been reprimed, it's all dried, the sun has actually come out, so it's dried fairly quickly, which is even better, we can get on to paint. Now I've got one of these fancy measuring cups, which has all of the ratios on the side. We have our black paint and our thinner. I'm going to go three to one. It says you can go between three to one and four to one, depending. I'm going to go three to one because we want a relatively thick coat on this. We don't want to be putting lots and lots and lots of layers on. Yes, it's going to look terrible. No, that is not the point of this coat, as we've stressed many, many times. If you've got this far and you're going, well, these guys are idiots in what they're doing, welcome to Pedalbox. So <laughs> I am going to pour this out. I'm going to try and find where my marks are, first of all. That is four to one. That is three to one. So I want, I want a decent amount of paint in here. So I am going to put whatever this line says three parts is because we have an entire side of the car to do and we have a back panel that is ready as well. Chris is just doing the other side, but I think instead of trying to get it all ready once again, given we are also fighting the potential of rain today, yes, I know we shouldn't be painting outside in the rain, we shouldn't be painting outside anyway. Again, welcome to Pedal Box. Uh, and I've just dropped a piece of rust into my paint. Oh no, I tell a lie, it's not rust, it is a bug. It's a very dead bug. Once again, this is not how you should do paint. This is not how you should do anything around this. But that is now a three to one mix of paint to thinners. I need to put the lid on so I don't get another bug in. I can't quite believe that one managed to find its way directly into the cup. That is actually amazing. And it is precisely what we did not want to happen. Well, I've made sure to give this a really good thorough mix, but I think we are now ready to load this into the paint gun and we can start throwing this on the passenger side of the car. We also have the back panel ready to go as well so that we can put that down with any excess we have left in this batch. So, wish me luck. Well, finally, 130 something episodes in, we actually have paint on this. Crucially, that isn't yellow, because <laughs> we got rid of that yellow paint a long, long time ago. And I'm really happy. I say I'm really happy with how this has turned out. It's, it doesn't look good. Yeah, I will go with it is better than we feared, not as good as we hoped. I yeah. think is probably my, the, be the best way I can put it. Yeah, as expected, it is highly every single imperfection in the primer, which we knew it would. Part of me wanted to put the paint on because it would show that up, so it will make life easier when we go over and we fill in gradually, but I don't want to do anything more on this for quite a while. This is a perfectly suitable paint job to get us through the IVA. Yeah, the reality is we're never going to get like an amazing finish out of this. Yeah. I do think uh, this is everything it needs to protect it for a while. Yeah. It's only one coat each of uh, paint and, uh, and lacquers. It's not a very thick, not a very hard wearing surface, but it's gonna be enough to just keep the thing safe, keep it watertight. Yeah. 
while we build the rest of it, while we get it through IVA and everything. Yeah, the interesting one is going to be how it fares up with the tarp over the top and whether or not it wears through. Because yeah. even from putting paint on a couple of days ago and getting to this stage, it was wearing off on the corners. So we might yet need to try and, I don't know, sticky back some, t some um, like foam or something on the very edge just to hold the, yeah. the tarp off for a while. But otherwise, it is kind of doing what we need it to do, and I really don't want to get too precious about it. Yeah. Because it's not that kind of paint job I, right now. I think now. the best we can say about this, uh, we, we've developed an entirely new form <laughs> of paint job here. We, you've all heard of the 20 foot paint job before because it looks okay from 20 yeah. foot. Is it a good paint job? No. Is it a good 20 foot paint job? No. no. This is a 20 foot, 70 mile an hour paint job, which is to say it only looks good at more than 70 mile an hour as it passes you at more than 20 foot. Yeah. Any closer or any slower yeah. and you'll see how crap it is. Yeah, pretty much. So if you'd like to keep supporting us in our endeavor to try and stop this thing rusting into the ground or at least surface rusting itself away and continually going over and over and just feeling bad for the fact that we neglect it so much, you can support us at patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show where you can support us from as little as a dollar a month and you'll also get discount on merch from shop.pedalbox.show which I'm not wearing, well no, I am wearing underneath this jumper but you're not wearing. I'm not wearing any Pedalbox merch exactly as usual. As <laughs> usual. Um, you should also make sure you subscribe to the channel particularly if you've got it this far, watched us and haven't just shouted at us for being idiots which again, Welcome to Pedalbox. I mean, to be honest, if you want to do that, please feel free to do so yeah. in the comments, because that helps us as well. Yeah, it all counts as engagement. But do let us know what you think of this paint job. I did put that post on the community uh, tab quite some time ago saying, should I just do this to see where all the dents are and then I can fix it? And I was roundly told, no, just get it finished, uh, like mechanically and everything else. And you were right at the time. Now it's actually more prevalent. And I, yeah. I think this has definitely been a worthwhile endeavor for a half day in the wind. On a driveway I'll, to get to get it to where it is. I'll also say to be fair, fixing all or finishing all of the mechanical stuff was always going to yes. take so long that we were always going to have to do some paint anyway yeah. just to stop the body from disappearing. Yeah. Because it's, we couldn't do all of the mechanical stuff. There's a lot that we could do. Yeah. But we couldn't do all the mechanicals until some body was on. Yeah. Um, and as soon as we had body on, it had to like at some point or other, it had to be protected from the elements. Yeah. So the next big go. one, aside from getting the front to this stage as well, so that the front wings aren't going to disappear, but we need to do a bit more work on the window surrounds and a few other bits. So that's probably going to take a few episodes to get to, to get the rest of it looking like this, but at least we can ignore this. Uh, we really need to do some more work on the dashboard, particularly as I keep screwing up making that bloody panel. So yeah, we're going to go back to the drawing board, which probably you should have used a drawing board last time. Would have been handy, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, never mind. Uh, and get that done and start working on finishing off the dashboard and getting all of the panel work and all of the switch gear located, the cables routed, the heater matrix kind of plumbed into all of its vents, because after that, we can put the glass in because we no longer need lots and lots of access right down through the front. And getting a windscreen in this has been on my top 10 list of, in fact, probably my top three things that I want to do to this car for about six months now. Um, so yes, tune into that on another episode of Pedalbox and we will see you at some point then. Thanks very much for watching.